Han, so great to be back with you today. How are things in your world? What's new? Hey, now we're into the third quarter. Where do you want us to focus for the rest of 2020? Hans, thank you so much for uh, joining us. Uh, more from me you with your final thoughts here in a moment. Thank you. All right, Jeremy, we're all set. Uh, you ready? Yeah, man, you bet. Let's do this, Hans. High five. You know, you always got to prepare for these things and make sure you're at the top of your game. Starting out with some good news today, uh, Jim Hogle, one of our senior managers of Network Assurance, you see him there from uh, Roanoke, Virginia, helped save a boater uh, a couple weeks ago with another uh, another boater caught on fire there in uh, Smith Mountain Lake. But thanks to the quick thinking of Jim and the other person, they helped the, the people out on that burning boat. Way to go, Jim. History was featured on an NBC affiliate, WSLS in Roanoke. Uh, again, our folks are always out there uh, serving their communities in so many different ways. So, again, uh, hats off to Jim for, for what he did there. And uh, good morning, good night, and uh, good afternoon. I've got 1201 here on the East Coast. We're here with Up to Speed Live today. Going to be uh, getting some updates from Christy and Hans as we talk about the uh, return to office uh, and everything else that is uh, going on in the business. So I want to get right to it. Uh, Hans, how are you? I'm doing fine, Jeremy. How are you doing? I'm well. Thank you for asking. I Had a like long to be the joke there. <laughs> well, I've got to do something with Flat Hans, so uh, there you go. He'll pop up every now and again. Yeah. I usually, it's very seldom I'm speechless, to be honest. I'm not sure that was my character playing there, but uh, anyhow, here I am. The teamers. Happy Monday, and for the ones that has been enjoying a 4th of July weekend, I hope you had a good weekend and you relaxed a little bit. And uh, you, last week was an exciting week. It was our 20th anniversary, and of course, a lot of focus on what we've done, but also a lot of focus on what we will do in the future and how we prepare ourselves. So um, uh, more about that coming a little bit later. But starting with uh, uh, the normal updates from me, uh, Health and safety of all our employees is number one. Uh, we see the rise, in, especially in the, some states in the United States right now, when it comes to the COVID-19 infections. Uh, and it's very different places than we have seen before. Uh, we see less outside the U.S. right now in different countries. Uh, but all in all, we just need to take care of each other in these times. We need to remind each other of the social distancing, wearing masks and all of that. And I think that's going to be extremely important right now as this COVID-19 is spreading uh, in different places and growing in different places. And in places where it's now a little bit calmer, remember, still we have our protocols and uh, the way we're dealing with each other. It's called respect for each other. Uh, to, to wear the mask and have the social distancing and think about all of that. So important. Uh, on the network side, uh, I think we're doing well. The network is performing very well. Uh, we had some announcement last week. I can give you some insights for tomorrow. There's some big announcement on 5G tomorrow. I think there are some new devices and probably some improvements on the network. So we're going to continue with a lot of announcement on 5G uh, the next six months. And I just want to remind you, we're now in the second half of this very unusual year, an unprecedented year. Uh, and uh, we have so many commitments uh, and so many launches for our customers in the second half. Just remind you a couple of them. We're going to do 10 mo 5G mobile edge compute centers in the second half. We're going to go nationwide with 5G in the second half. We're going to have in total 60 cities on 5G ultra wideband uh, before the year end. Uh, that, that's big numbers. And we're also going to have at least 10 cities with 5G home uh, launched this year. All of that is happening in the second half. So uh, uh, we are excited what's going to happen in the second half on 5G. The network keeps up. Our team is executing. And uh, we have a big second half in front of us to put ourselves in a really good position in the beginning of 2021. But more important, continue to delight, delight our customers to see that they get both the best, best network, but also the best optionality, especially on the consumer side, working a lot with mix and match, etc., which is important to us, as well as on the, on the business side, where Tammy and the team are really working with 
both large and small enterprises as well as our governmental or federal customers to see how we can support them in this totally new world where uh, technology and broadband becomes uh, sort of essential for actually doing business and staying connected. So um, we are getting into the second half of this year with a lot of business as usual, but it's a lot of that are not business as usual. We are, of course, today starting our return to office strategy, and Christy will talk about it later on. Been a lot of planning, and we're now starting with a, a sort of a staggered model, which has been very much discussed and communicated, but you cannot communicate enough in these times, so we're going to hear a little bit uh, more about that. But I'm excited for the next six months, because we have a lot in front of us, but it cannot take away the importance of the crisis we're in front of us. And uh, we talked about the pandemic, the financial crisis, how we support our customers. But we also have the ra racial injustice that uh, I just want to remind everybody that's nothing that we talked about last week. And now we forget it. We need to continue that conversation. Uh, and I have to announce tomorrow the lead director of, uh, of Verizon's board, uh, Clarence Otis, will be on up to speed, and he will continue this racial discussion uh, from his angle, and I think that we will just continue to have those discussions. And I still get a lot of mails uh, from employees, and they could be good, they could be bad, doesn't really matter. The most important that we engage in these conversations right now and see that we actually lead to meaningful improvement, meaningful actions. And I see some of it, we are not done. Nobody's done. Everybody needs to continue to work. But I'm happy to say that the engagement we have from all the V teamers in our community and even externally is good. And uh, we just want to continue to have that conversation. So that's a short update uh, for where we are. Jerry, back to you. Awesome. Thank you so much for that, Hans. Uh, next, I want to get over to uh, Christy for some of her updates. As Hans mentioned, you know, we're in day one here of uh, the return to office, and she's going to give us more information there. Christy, how are you doing? I'm great, Jeremy. Thanks for having me with you here today on Up to Speed and look forward to talking to all the V-teamers. Um, as you heard from Hans and Jeremy, this is a big week. We've been planning since the middle of May for how we would start to reopen our normal office buildings and get our teams back in. So this is the beginning of our rotation. So uh, hearing from the V-teamers, I thought I'd highlight that and then just reiterate our on-site safety protocols. And so I'll pull up a few slides, if you wouldn't mind, Jeremy. On our first slide, just as a reminder, we have had uh, a priority that you've heard consistently from Hans and myself, which is keeping and caring for the V-team, keeping everybody safe, maintaining the reliability of our networks, and making sure we're doing our part to help society recover. And then we had a crisis response, moving to an adjusted phase, and now for June through September, our new transition state of business as usual. And so that's where we are now, and we're going to be heading into our rotating offices. So I want to just remind us what those practices are. So if we could move ahead to slide three, what I'm going to do is just highlight as we start the rotating offices we're going to have Group A this week, and then it'll be followed by Group B, Group C, and Group D, and then we'll start all over again. So on the next slide, really want to just highlight all of us have a role in keeping each other safe. And we know how awesome the V team is, and we know that all of us are going to do our part to keep ourselves safe, our workplace safe, and those around us safe. And we always want to start by saying, if you are not feeling well, please don't come to work. Uh, we have great support programs in place for our employees that are unwell, and you will have support and benefits to care for yourself. Also, if you're experiencing any symptoms of COVID, stay home. Please don't come to work if you've been advised to quarantine by, uh, by any organization, whether it's the state government or us or others. And then finally, we're asking employees to confirm that they don't have a temperature, and if you don't have a thermometer, we have a way for you to acquire one from our catalog, and your supervisor or HR can help you with that. And so on the next slide, we have a little bit of a kind of a cheat sheet to remind everybody I've got four key points to make. The first is we've got the weekly rotating schedule so that for our uh, office workers and sales teams, they'll be able to gradually reintroduce coming into the office. There'll be a rotating schedule from now through September. The COVID webpage will always be there to tell you what rotating week it is. You'll also get email reminders and things such as that. 
And so your group assignment, as I mentioned, this is group A week, and then next week will be and so forth. And so this is really important. Then if you move to the next slide, we're rotating, you've got your weekly assignment. In addition, we have a return to office tool that we build specifically to help our V-teamers. Here, you'll get an alert that it's uh, an office uh, assignment week for you or your team uh, or any of you that are involved in the rotating schedules. And then the tool will prompt you with your training, with your self-assessment questionnaire, and then remind you and give you clearance to come into the office. And finally, facial coverings. You'll see in a moment when I remind everybody of what our on-site protocols are, we have provided facial coverings to our employees so that when they're entering the facilities or moving about the office space that you wear your face coverings. Um, when an employee is seated at their workstation, practicing proper social distancing, they can remove their face masks. So Jeremy, we know from Pulse, a lot of employees had questions of how's this all gonna work. So let's go to the next slide and I'll talk a little bit about our on-site protocols. So our real estate team uh, and, and, and the HR team have worked really closely together to put these protocols in place with our emergency ops center. So we have detailed procedures for thoroughly cleaning and disinfecting our workstations and common areas. We also have daily and weekly cleaning protocols. We have hand sanitizer stations. We've also defined measures to control the flow of people around the facility. We've moved workstations and we put signage throughout the buildings, some of which are shown in the picture here. On the next slide, you can see another example of signage on a workstation indicating that this is a workstation that is clear for uh, work and can be utilized. And then the next available workstation from it will be six feet or 1.8 meters away. And so the markations will be throughout not only the office space, but on the next slide, you can see pictures of conference rooms. And similarly, the doors will have signage indicating that the conference room is available. There'll be signage reminding employees of the social distancing practices expected for the joint areas, such as conference space. And even in the conference room, you could see chairs that are marked okay to sit at or needs to stay vacant to maintain distancing. We also, through the period that we've been working remote or in our new disrupted state, learned a lot about effective virtual and remote and distributed teams. So we've got office etiquette protocols that we've gleaned from all of you of what's worked best and what's helped our teams stay effective. And so we are recommending that people continue to host their meetings virtually, even if some team members are at the office and some team members are remote because we know that's a way that people can be equally participating in the meeting. And then finally, on the last slide, I wanna just share, what is it that you can do? We know employees wanna know, how can I help? What can I do to be the most prepared or help my fellow V-teamers? And so we would just urge you to please read and understand the material and the communications that we're sending to you. Uh, please complete your training uh, in order to be able to return to the office. There's very good detailed instructions in the return to office tools for the days that you intend to return to the office. And then please follow our guidelines for social distancing. If we've provided you facial mask coverings because you're returning to the office, please wear those, bring them with you, participate in cleaning your workstation, and then finally continue to use the COVID webpage. We keep that updated. And as you know, it still continues to be a very fluid situation. So we wanna make sure our V-teamers always have the most up-to-date information as possible. So Jeremy, that's what I wanted to cover as kind of a, a refresher of what we've been building toward and where we are. And lastly, uh, before I throw it back to you for questions, I've got one last slide just to remind everybody we will be heading into the beginning of the third quarter and we will have a third quarter pulse and it will be July 29th to August 7th and you'll begin to see more information about it. We're calling it Pulse Plus. One of the key elements of our employee North Star objectives is to be able to benchmark our employee Pulse results against other companies and industries around the world. And so we've uh, partnered with Gallup, who has a leading uh, benchmark and survey capability in this area. So we're gonna build off of all the survey work we've done to date. We're launching Pulse Plus later this month, so stay tuned 
There'll be communications, there'll be training, there'll be uh, benchmarks and customized support for teams for action planning coming out this uh, next pulse, and we're very excited about it. So I want to thank uh, the comms team for helping us promote our return to a normal pulse. Uh, we've had three COVID pulse surveys, but now as we head back to Q3, we're going to do a normal pulse and check on all the areas of employee engagement and workplace uh, satisfaction that we would like to concentrate on. Good. Christy, thank you, as always, for all the updates. And reminder, if you do have a question, you can email those to us. Just send us a message live at verizon.com. Got a couple coming in here. But before we get to those, I want to share this employee story with uh, with everybody. Uh, a few weeks ago, an employee posted a comment on Katie's very successful blog, uh, Motherhood and Mountain Dew, uh, about how she's finding the balance of work and serving your customers. Uh, in some way, she says, uh, Melissa Dixon, who I'm talking about, the solution specialist from Springfield, Illinois, it's helped her connect with her customers a bit better through all this and really put herself in their shoes as to what they're going through. So uh, she's currently redeployed into telesales. And while her store is reopening soon, she'll be staying in that role to support the team. Have a look at her story. My team at Springfield is like my family. I genuinely don't know what I would do without them. My husband started working for the company about seven months ago. It's a family business now, apparently. <laughs> Right off the bat, they told us like, hey, don't worry about pay, you're good. So that was, I think, the, the best part about it was knowing right away that the company was gonna take care of us and that my husband and I didn't have to worry. Our HR rep and our DM got together with us and, and they were like, just, you know, you can sign up for a leave of absence. And my husband did, and it was just like immediately approved. And so at that point, like all of our stress is gone and I'm like, okay, bring it on. Like, I'm gonna do telesales, I'm so excited. Like I was pumped. That was huge for me, getting to see what they do in a completely different channel with this company. My son is probably the most outgoing child in the entire world. He just will run right in here and he's always wanting to bring me flowers and like tell me about what, you know, happened outside. And so I'll be on the phone and be like, Shh, and he'll be like, what? You're on the phone? Can I talk to him? Can I say hi? And I'm like, Keegan, no, Keegan. <laughs> I think that that's part of like the whole being a mom thing. Is like and and you know I'm like oh sorry I work from home and then they're immediately like oh I have two kids at home it completely changes like the whole tone of the conversation and it goes from you know like polite customer service to okay I'm talking to this person on a phone on the phone like they're my friend we are so lucky that we work for a company that not only has taken care of us and made sure that like nobody dealt with any financial repercussions of a nationwide pandemic, but who goes out of their way to make sure that we're doing okay uh, mentally through all of this. And, you know, they gave us a choice even, like it wasn't even like, okay, well, we're gonna redeploy you and here you go. Like they gave us a choice, like, you know, what do you wanna do? Let's like, you know, one to four, like, what what you would like to do i think like going back to the store this is going to be huge for us knowing what the other channels do on a day-to-day -day basis i have a good work from home team too but i mean yeah i uh, i'm anxious to get back to the store i miss i miss my friends <laughs> Uh, Melissa, thanks so much for sharing your story. And, uh, you know, if I was calling in and heard your son, I'd be okay with that. That's a, a good thing to, to show people the, the reality of the, the world that we're living in. So many of our folks are uh, redeployed. So many of our folks are out in the field taking care of customers in, in various different ways. So thank you for sharing your story. I uh, want to jump into a, a couple of quick questions here, uh, starting with Hans. Uh, as you mentioned, obviously, we're into the second quarter now, and you gave us the, the list of things that we're looking forward to. Uh, early on in this, we talked about the business roundtable and how you're connecting to other business leaders around the world. Uh, as this continues to go on and on, uh, how have those conversations changed over the past couple of months as uh, real time and looking into the future for what business uh, leaders are doing uh, in other industries? Uh, it has changed quite dramatically. I think in the beginning, uh, the business roundtable was very much academic. Uh, 
how to um, share best practices between uh, uh, the companies, how to deal in the best way, the safe and healthy for the employees. Then it quickly turned into uh, uh, sort of the, uh, the economical downturn, how to support uh, businesses, how to support supply. And then hurdles that was created in the in the in the whole sort of uh, crisis or pandemic, as well as uh, when we talk about uh, how we deliver our service, etc. So there was a lot to talk about that problems with importing of good goods for many of the companies, etc. And then of course a lot to talk about vaccine. That still is happening, uh, but I think. Uh, we have a meeting every every week has been uh, dominated of the racial injustice. I think that's where we have uh, four subcommittees working with everything from uh, education and learning to uh, uh, police reform, uh, etc., broadband, uh, in order to make this uh, a better place for everyone. And uh, I think it has changed and it's changed what's happening in our society. So right now it's more about racial injustice and what the largest corporation of this country can do together. Uh, uh, but also what uh, we believe that uh, uh, the politicians should do. And we uh, earlier last week or late last week, we uh, actually sent a letter to the Congress about what we thought was important changes that needs to be changed in the reforms. Um, so that's how the DRT has engaged and has been moving. But it's a good place to share with other CEOs and other large corporations. And then, of course, Christy and her team engage with the HR heads of these organizations. Craig talked to the policy people. So we are learning from all of them in order to be as good as possible for all the stakeholders we're managing. And we learn anything all the time and new things all the time from other companies. And I think that this is... Um, uh, I'm not sure how many times, times I've said it, but it's unprecedented time and you need to work in unprecedented ways. So if I can learn something from other companies, if Christy can learn from other companies, we can share what we're doing in order to do it better for the society, for our employees, for our customers, and even for our shareholders, uh, then we will do it. And that we have really done this uh, last couple of months. Uh, and I've been part of many of these type of networks, but... This time, in these type of circumstances, the network becomes extremely important. Good. Thank you for that, Hans. Uh, Christy, this is a question for, for you. And I know, Hans, I mean, if you watch news, you know that uh, the pandemic is not slowing down in certain parts. Uh, and in fact, it's picking up. So uh, uh, Nancy, who is in El Paso, Texas, wants to know, uh, for folks who have uh, students in schools, when that comes back around in the fall, depending on what happens, uh, how will the business be there to continue to help parents or folks who have uh, other needs, uh, even medically, to get them through this time? That's a great question, uh, Nancy. Thanks for asking it and for watching up to speed. One of the things we're monitoring closely is what's happening every day in the states as well as in the countries around the world. And as you note, the number of cases continues to rise. So we are very, very closely monitoring the states. They're trying to figure out what they are going to do with their school systems. Universities are trying to figure that out. And that's actually why we put some of our plans together from now through October 1st so that during the October and September timeframe when typically schools and universities return to campuses or to their regular schedule, we would have the benefit of that knowledge as we begin to make some of the longer term decisions of what we believe our operating model will be after October 1st. So that's part one. Part two is that, of course, as we get more information, we're going to look at that and make decisions around that consistent with how we have everything up until now, making sure that our V-teamers have a way to continue to contribute at work and help keep Horizon able to serve and keep our customers connected while also helping all the V-teamers thrive and contribute on the job. And I think we should expect a, a continued environment of uncertainty. And that's why we use mechanisms like Up to Speed and our COVID webpage to share transparently with employees, what is it we know? What are the principles we're applying to make decisions? What decisions have we made? And it's a little bit why we're not making decisions now for what's gonna happen in October, because we just don't know. 
Yeah, Christy, thanks for that. And uh, like you said, this is a, a process you're almost learning uh, real time as as how the business needs to respond. Uh, and a reminder for folks, you can always send those questions uh, to ask Christy if there's something specific. And like she said, the resource pages inside Verizon.com and the inside Verizon app that you can download. Uh, thank you both for the uh, the Q and A. We'll continue getting those uh, over uh, as they come in. Uh, Hans, want to go to you for your final thoughts today. Thank you, Jeremy. Uh... So first of all, uh, uh, we know that many of you have been working from home for a long time. There are now the procedures that Christy talked about uh, if you want to go back to office. But I also want to, to say to the employees in the stores and our frontline em employees when it comes to engineers, we have been ever close. You have been out there fighting and, and, and serving our customers in an, uh, such an impressive way and both innovated and continue doing that. So. I, I always uh, come back to thank you for that, and, and, and that's going to be extremely important. We have a second half of 2020 that's probably going to continue to be unusual. Uh, the first half was just something I have never experienced. I've never been part of that. I've been part of many things, uh, crises in my life, but I've never seen anything like this. And uh, I would like to thank the whole V team uh, for the first half of uh, 2020 for a fantastic job. Uh, you have been amazing in these times, uh, delivering services, innovating, keeping friends, colleagues uh, connected, seeing that we find new ways to have virtual meetings and greetings and all of that. Uh, I, 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 I haven't seen so much uh, joy in a, such a difficult situation as we have seen in the first half of 2020. So uh, let's hope and pray that the second half is going to be a little bit lighter. I don't think it's going to be normal, just to be clear on that. But uh, I, I hope that uh, we're going to go to something called new normal uh, in many cases. So I, I thank you very much again for all of that. Uh, and secondly, we are, as I said, in the second half here, a lot of things to do. I've always talked about we need to take care of the crisis, but we also need to evolve as a company, take care of the opportunity that is created in this in this time. And, and I think we're doing it, but we just need to continue to execute on our strategy and our business as usual, because that's going to make us coming out even stronger uh, after this uh, pandemic, uh, financial, economical downturn and this racial injustice and all of that, we should come out stronger and a better company serving all our stakeholders, even in a better way. That's my, my aim and target. And, uh, and that's the whole leadership team and the board uh, committed to do so. Um, that's my summary for today. And uh, remember, tomorrow's up to speed with Clarence Otis, the lead director of the board. I think that's going to be uh, an interesting uh, to listen to him. Back to you, Jeremy. Thank you so much, Panja. Looking forward to that conversation with uh, Clarence tomorrow that Diana will be uh, leading for us. Uh, one thing before we wrap here, Michael, if you want to take this video, uh, last week this was announced. Our uh, work with the Black Information Network, it launched last week and is now on the air. First of its kind, 24-7 national and local all-news audio service for the black community. It's distributed nationally through the iHeartRadio app, uh, available online, like you can see there, via mobile, smart speakers, smart TVs, uh, as well as uh, dedicating some all-news uh, local AM, FM broadcast radio stations uh, around the the, the, uh, the country providing news, weather, traffic, and sports. Uh, so I wanted to make sure you all saw that and how we are uh, part of that and continuing that conversation. So give that a listen uh, when you can. We'll be back with you again tomorrow, like Han said. A reminder, uh, if you haven't talked to someone in a while, shoot them a text. Uh, tell them you're thinking about them and, and tell them uh, hello and hope all is going well with them. Uh, until next time, you're up to speed.